<clears throat> I have a host dropping off money today, so I might have to step away for a second. All right. Well, if you guys could mute yourselves, that's a big help because then we don't have to, to mute you. And let me go down here and I'm going to go to speaker view. That way, um, when Gretchen talks, it'll just be her up there. Is everybody seeing Gretchen Baker? Just give me a thumbs up. Gretchen, can you talk for a second? Hello. There we go. All right, so we are so lucky to have um, Gretchen Thompson on the phone with us to, today um, to do this Zoom call. She is going to share um, everything that she has learned and the reasons why she believes she is so successful um, at recruiting. Um, the reason this video came to be was because she was getting asked after retreat two weekends ago about her secrets. And I think what you'll learn through this recording is that there really aren't any secrets. Gretchen just works hard and is very intentional about her recruiting. So she has been kind enough to put together her top, well, she thought it was gonna be a top 10 list of tips for recruiting success, but it ended up being 11 and it could expand till we're done. So yeah. <laughs> we're gonna turn it over to Gretchen and let her share her ideas. And Gretchen, go right ahead. Well, thank you, Robin. And um, thank you guys for um, tuning in. Yeah, I did have some people come up to me and um, because at the retreat we had everybody stand up and um, I missed the portion where they talked about person where you recognize personal recruiting. Um, I must have been in the bathroom at that time or something. So I don't know if I was, um, you know, the number one or whatever. But when it stood up for um, team recruit, personal team recruiting, um, my team had 81 this year. And, um, and that was the most of anybody. Although, you know, that's part of me is like, well, that's not that great, because maybe I should have promoted more directors, and then that number would have been less. But those are the flying monkeys in my head. So I'm just gonna banish <laughs> them. Um, <laughs> um, and you know, just a little background. I've been do I've been with Pamperage for twelve years. Um, I have always loved the idea of recruiting. Um, well, it took me about six months in the business before I I really started recruiting. My first recruit was just somebody who came up to me at a show and said, "Yeah, I want to do this." And I was like, um, "Okay," uh, but kind of once I got the bug, um, which was actually after my first, um, or maybe it was my second conference. I think um, we had the executive dinner, and Cindy. Um, example was my executive and um, somehow I came in like number 10 in recruiting for that year and I was blown away because I was like in my mind I was brand new um, I really didn't know what I was doing um, but I kind of got the bug from that and then of course um, when the trips came out um, when I started to realize you know that I could actually earn a trip which was about two years into the business um, I really started to uh, ramp up my recruiting. So this year, my goal, my personal goal was to sign 32 recruits. And um, I actually ended up signing 42, uh, which was definitely the most I've ever signed. So <laughs> thank you. I did a little bit of analysis yesterday, just looking at all my numbers. And um, out of those 42, um, 27 um, either have qualified or will qualify. Um, which is about a 64% qualification rate. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, out of that, and I am a 50-50 cooking show versus virtual party person. Um, I, I did 51 cooking shows last year and I did 51 virtual parties. Not, by, not on purpose, um, it just kind of happened that way. And um, out of the 51 cooking shows, I had 18 recruits. Out of the 51 virtual parties, I had nine recruits. Um, and then another nine just came from life or referrals. Um, I mentioned my husband's high school reunion to Robin earlier, and I literally like recruited three people from my husband's high school class. Um, <laughs> and then um, 
and seven were actually home office um, recruits who just like, you know, went to pamperedup.com and found a, a consultant near me and chose me to sign up under. Um, now, but interestingly, the, um, the cooking show recruits had a lower qualification rate. My virtual party recruits, um, all but one of them qualified. But my cooking show recruits, um, only half of them qualified. So that's kind of something that I'm going to be working on this year. And, um, but just wanted to encourage you that, you know, whether you're a virtual party consultant or cooking party consultant, um, you definitely, you know, can recruit. And a lot of um, what I'm going to be talking about really applies to either one. Um, the first thing I wrote down was to know your why. And I mean, I know, you know, most of you guys were at the retreat. I think, I think Bonnie is the only one. And by the way, say hi to Bonnie, you guys. She's my next director. Wave, Bonnie. Because um, <laughs> all of you guys know each other, but I don't think Bonnie knows any of you. So, <laughs> um, so know your why. And if you, I know you guys were all at the retreat and we all talked about that. And my team thinks I'm like a broken record talking about your why. Um, if, yeah. If you didn't listen to the coffee talk, the recorded coffee talk call by Brenda Copy, who was talking about time management this past week, definitely listen to it. Um, fantastic, and she does an even better job of breaking down, you know, considering your why and why you need to know your why. Um, from there, setting goals for yourself. Um, I'm a huge goal person. Um, vision, goals, all that stuff. I love it all. Um, I wasn't always that kind of a person. Goals used to scare me because I, I, feel like, I felt like I would feel like a failure um, when I didn't reach them. But what really changed for me is when somebody showed me the, um, the and I know you were talking about this, I think at the retreat, Robin, the, the target, the bullseye, that totally changed you know, my perspective on goals. And since then, I'm a total goal person. Um, and you got to have your goals everywhere. I mean, put them on your screensaver, you know, uh, put them in on your desk, you know, in your car, your bathroom, whatever. Um, they have to be everywhere. Um, and, and also, you know, backing down from your goals, you know, figuring out what that's going to look like. What's the, what that, what is that going to do for your family, you know, for your lifestyle? Um, uh, and sharing them with people too, you know, don't keep them to yourself. If your goal is to, you know, promote to executive director, you know, scary as it is, which is where I am, I'm like scared to death. Um, sharing it with people will make it, will make it much more likely to happen. Um, number three is accountability buddies. I mean, Pam and I, we're on the phone like every day, kicking around stuff. We're either kicking each other's butts or we're you know, kicking around ideas. Like, what do you think of this? What do you think I should take to this show? Who do you think, you know, I'm going to call these people. What do you think about, you know, I mean, literally like every day, but even if you're not every day with your accountability partner, find somebody who, you know, is on a similar trajectory. It doesn't have to be somebody who's like you. Pam and I are very different in personality and you guys who've met us both, you know, um, we're very different in personality, but we work really well together probably for that reason. Um, you know, because her strengths kind of speak to my weaknesses and, and vice versa. Um, so yeah, definitely with that. Um, number four, always be curious. And with that, I mean, um, asking questions, not only, um, of your recruit leads, which you definitely want to do because, you know, you, you need to find out what it is that you can offer this person um, that will be helpful to them. Um, but also, you know, picking brains and listening to other successful consultants and other direct sales um, leaders because, and, and again, I said to Robin before this, I know I'm preaching to the choir because you guys are all here. Um, but I think that's something that you can share with your teams is, you know, um, don't ever stop learning. I mean, burn these, you know, get those coffee talk calls. Um, if you can figure it out, burn them to a CD, listening to them in your car. Um, I pull up a podcast in my, uh, in my car while I'm driving. Um, just, you know, immerse your mind in 
um, all of the training that is out there because there is so much, um, even just on YouTube. Um, conference, I mean, of course, you got to be a conference. That's just a no brainer. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, you know, I mean, conference, I think, you know, because when you go to conference and you see all the different kind of people that are successful, your mind is so expanded to how you look at who is a recruit lead. You know, I think the second year I went, I ran into this one. This is before I promoted director. I ran into this woman who was in a wheelchair and she had that little red director ribbon on. And I was like, what the heck? She's in a wheelchair. She's a director. How does that work? So I, I sat next to her and I just picked her brain. I'm like, what made you think to even like try this business? And she goes, you know what? I just got tired of being the sick person. And so, you know, what I realize is that when I see someone in a wheelchair, like I can offer them that opportunity. You know, I don't have to look at them and say, oh, they could never do this business because they could never carry big bags into a cooking show or something like that. Um, you know, your mind is just really, really expanded by going to conference. Um, book a full calendar. I mean, you got to start um, from a full calendar for a couple of different reasons. First of all, we all know the formula that, you know, you book eight parties, six will hold, you're in front of 60 people a month, you'll get two recruits out of that a month if you're, you know, informing, inviting, all that stuff. But also from this perspective of um, you need to have, you know, sort of the creds to be able to offer this as a realistic job opportunity to somebody. And so if you have eight parties a month, if you're pulling in, you know, two, $3,000 a month in income, you can have the, you'll hold your head high. You'll have the confidence to say to people, you know, I'm with Pampered Chef. I'm a leader. I make a good, you know, income. When I went to my husband's um, high school reunion and I ended up recruiting three of his friends, um, you know, I held my head up high because I, I could say, you know, I'm, I'm consistently earning $3,000 a month um, doing this business. And so, you know, and also from the standpoint of when you don't have a full calendar, um, you're sort of hesitant to recruit because you're thinking, yeah, I really need those bookings for myself. When you have, when you've got like 10 bookings on your calendar, you're going to be more than happy to flip one of those hosts, you know, and make them a recruit. Um, which that's another thing is, is flip your, you know, make sure you're offering the opportunity to your hosts um, several times, not just, not just in passing, not just once. Um, I kind of do it like very like matter of factly my first, by the way, you know, I just want to let you know if you're thinking of joining at all, you know, any of the bookings that you get from your party are going to be yours. And I don't even ask them at that point, you know, if they're interested, I just kind of throw that out there and then I'll revisit it later on. Um, but definitely, you know, two or three times and then before the party closes. Um, number seven is uh, mindset. You know, I'm a huge mindset person and, you know, above the line thinking. I was telling Robin, I felt like I could have written that book, The Wisdom of Oz, because that is so me, like the whole above the line. Not that I'm never be below the line and Pam can testify that she's like, all right, you're going below the line. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's pretty natural uh, for me to be like, okay, what can I do? You know, what can I do to fix this? You know, um, I read a quote from the, U the former UCLA, UCLA basketball coach, John Wooden, the other day. Um, and it said, don't let what you can't do interfere with what you can do. So, so many times I hear people say, oh, I can't recruit, or I can't book that many parties, or I can't get somebody to sign on the dotted line. Um, my kids know, like when I was raising them, uh, they were not allowed to say the word can't. And literally, like that was worse than a curse word in my house. Um, no, we don't say that word. We figure out how and we do it. Um, and, and again, I mean, this is something that I, my father probably instilled in me, but I have never believed that there's anything that anybody else can do that I couldn't do if I simply learned how and applied myself to do it. So, I mean, I look at, you know, Nancy Joe Ryan, I look at Sharon Zellin, I look at all those like total rock stars and I go, yeah, that could be me. You know, I could, I know I could do it. Um, I just have to figure out, I have to keep learning, I have to figure out how I'm not, I'm not there yet. Um, but you know, I'll get there. 
Um, number eight is focus. Um, because what you are looking for is what you will see. And, you know, a perfect example is the analogy of, um, did you ever go to buy a car and you decide to buy, you know, a Subaru and you've never noticed how many Subarus are on the road, but all of a sudden everybody has a Subaru. It's the same thing with recruiting. So once you decide that you're going to recruit, all of a sudden you will see recruits everywhere. Um, so that's focus. Um, number nine is the monthly opportunity events that we do on Facebook. Um, we do these, Jen, Pam and I do these as a team often. Um, other times we do them just individually with our own teams. And um, even when they're kind of dead and maybe we don't have a lot of people showing up, it's still a great exercise because it gets us in the mindset of we are recruiting, we are reaching out to people, we are inviting people to these events. I had a woman join on December 31st who had attended every single one of our look and learns over the last year and we had them every single month. She attended every single one. I didn't think she was ever gonna join. She finally signed December 31st. Um, <laughs> so keep consistent with offering those look and learns. Um, and I will go into that more a little bit later. Robin asked me to you know, dive into that. I just have like two more. So let me just finish my little list here. Um, number 10 is sell the kit. I start out and I think this was, I don't know if this was Pam's idea or if she found it somewhere else, but, um, the, uh, the laminated these. So we have, you know, the sell the kit, which kit fits you. Um, it's laminated. It's a flyer on the back side. It shows you, you know, all the different, just like the flyer that you print from the website. Um, I've got like 12 copies of those that are laminated. I passed those out at the beginning of the show. And um, yeah, you did have an original idea, Pam. <laughs> um, yeah, so pass those out at the beginning of the show. Usually I don't pass out my catalogs until the end. And again, this is for a cooking show, but usually I don't pass out the catalogs until till the end, unless I've got a boatload of people. If there's 15 people there, I'm passing out catalogs because I know if I don't, they're gonna be there till midnight deciding what they want after I pass out the catalog. So, but if you pass out the catalog, then all you gotta tell them is open it up to the inside back cover and take a look at the kits. And then I walk them through the kits and just explain that, you know, I want you to know what's in the kits because at the end of the night, you're gonna have a lot on your wish list. If you have a lot that's in these kits, I'm gonna encourage you to go ahead and order the kit. Um, and also, I want you to be thinking of questions that you can ask about how my business works. Um, and we're going to give away a prize later. And the way you get tickets is by asking questions. So, yeah, sell the kit. Don't be afraid to sell the kit. Um, you know, I did. Did I have kidnappers? Absolutely. You know, 27 out of the 42 qualified. Um, I had at least four kidnappers. Um, I don't care. I, I don't worry about them. That's, that's their problem. Um, <laughs> um, and number 11, I guess it is 11, is um, stay in touch and build relationships. So I think one of the questions that, um, that Robin got from somebody was, you know, how do you, how do you get somebody to actually sign on the dotted line? Sometimes it's just patience, um, you know, and, and having a bit, if you've got a big, you know, funnel, a big, um, you know, what do we call it, Pam? The, uh, the, the, the bucket, the, <laughs> we have a term for it where we're throwing, you know, all these potential recruits. If you've got like 20 potential recruits that you're working with, whether this one signs this month or next month, it's not your, it's, you're not worried about it. You know, you've got a big enough pool that you're, that you're, you know, working with and staying in touch with. And I can't tell you how many times people will say to me, thank you so much for reaching out to me, for not giving up on me. Um, you know, I have a whiteboard and I write all my, my recruit leads on that whiteboard. And then every once in a while I look up there, I'm like, oh, I haven't talked to her in a while. I'm just send her a Facebook message. Hey, how you doing? Just circle around, see if you're still thinking about, you know, Pampertia. Um, would you like to come to our opportunity event? Would you like to come to our spring launch, you know? definitely inviting those people to spring launch because everybody wants to see the, the new spring products. Um, 
and just build relationships. You know, it's interesting because when I was looking at those numbers of who signed up at a cooking show and who, um, yeah, who signed up at a cooking show and who qualified from that, the ones who actually signed up right at the show, which I did have, um, I forget the number, but I did have a lot who actually did sign up right at the show. Um, very few of those actually qualified. Um, so I'm going to be working on that this year and maybe trying to improve that. But um, of the cooking show recruits who didn't sign up right at the show, every single one of them qualified. And I think the reason is that I actually had time with them to build a relationship because most of them, you know, probably hosted and then moved into signing up as a consultant. And so I had more time with them to really build the relationship, if that makes sense. Um, we also, Jen, Pam, and I also started doing the, instead of sliding down the mountain and starting with the recruiting question, actually sort of sliding up the mountain and, you know, getting somebody, which you guys already do this already. It's just sort of a different name for it. But when, but you know, when you get somebody to host a party, then it's sort of a natural progression to go into asking about recruiting, you know, recruiting that person. So, um, so that's, that's what I had written down. <coughs> All right. So, Here's a couple of really key points that I think I heard um, Gretchen really talk about. Um, making sure you stay focused, um, being willing to kind of remove the filter from your eyes and see the people that you're coming in contact with, whether at a show or at a class reunion or out and about, there are people out there possible recruits you just need to remove that filter and be able to see them i think the other thing that she talked about that's really worth repeating is relationships you know this is a relationship business so you really do need to foster that relationship help you know keep people connected to you so that when the time is right even if it's after 12 look and learns throughout the year and December 31st, they decide to be a part of your team that happens. But, you know, I think the other thing that I see Gretchen do that I don't think you mentioned Gretchen is you continue to grow as a leader. You're always looking for ways to better yourself. You know, you did a, a dig into your statistics for last year to know where your recruits came from and where um, um, the number of shows you did live versus virtual. I think that speaks to your wanting to improve yourself and finding where that improvement needs to be focused. So applause for you for being that smart to, to look, you know, to look that far into what you're doing. So I know you were going to talk a little bit more about the look and learn um, opportunity event, whatever you want to call it. But tell me, tell me what that looks like. How often is it done? Is it virtual? Is it live? Is it, you know, how are you doing them? So um, most of the time, what we've done is um, it's a one hour event. And um, we, between the three of us, and it's either, you know, me, Jen, and Pam, um, or it's, you know, me and two other leaders on my team, um, we will, we do have an outline and we, um, we sort of tweak it and edit it each month, change it up just a little bit. Um, and then we take turns scheduling the posts into the one hour event so that you know no one person is posting every time um, what that does is first of all you avoid facebook jail obviously um, but you also get um, more people involved and invested um, you know and uh, so you know i know like if you know if, if bonnie has a recruit lead who's tuning into this event then I would love for her to be scheduling some of the posts because then her recruit lead is going to be hearing from her. Um, 
So that's what we do. It's about 20, 21 posts. So it's like every three minutes throughout the event. Um, we set it up. Um, literally, it's usually only like a day or two ahead. Um, ideally, I mean, sometimes it's probably better to set it up like a week in advance, I would say, but we haven't been that organized about it yet. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, just invite people. It, it is an event. It's not a group. It's an event. And, um, and at the end of the event, uh, one of us will go on Facebook live and just, um, answer any remaining questions. So that can be, you know, it can be five minutes to 20 minutes because it really depends on how many people are asking, you know, questions. And, uh, and that's about it. We've played around with, sometimes we've done, um, you know, like a participation prize to where like you don't have to sign up in order to get the prize. Sometimes we've offered some sort of a rebate or something. Um, I think we've kind of settled into like just not even offering a prize at this point. Um, and then we did toy around with, uh, last month we did like a three day event where um, different ones of us were going live at a different time throughout those three days. Um, not quite sure whether we're gonna continue with that format or not, I don't know. Um, but I definitely do like the live, you know, at least one of us going live at the end and maybe at the beginning too, you know, just to sort of welcome everybody but that's kind of that's kind of how it works all right the question was asked Gretchen how do you invite people to that event um you know it's really going to be those people that you have a relationship with um, I like to put it out there for my team so that when they're working with the recruit leads they can say we've got an opportunity event you know next Tuesday I would love to invite you to. And by the way, I didn't really talk about how to get your, your team recruiting, but one thing I will say is that I definitely noticed that my team kind of mirrors what I do. Um, I had 42 recruits this year, they had 45, you know, so they diff definitely are gonna mirror, you know, follow your example. Um, and then, you know, and setting goals for them as well, but, and, and also, you know, throwing it out there from the beginning that, you know, that recruiting is just part of what we do. Um, so yeah, I just personally, usually I'll, I'll send somebody a personal message on Facebook and, you know, Diane, my one who had come to every single one, um, well not, maybe not everyone, she might've missed one or two, but the one who just signed up, I sent her a mess. I would send her a message. I'd be just like, you know, I don't know if you're still thinking about, you know, joining, but we're having this, uh, information event on Tuesday. I would love for you to be my guest. Are you free? Um, you know, that's usually how I do it. And then we do have the other, like the group on uh, Facebook that's, you know, for the thinkers, for people who are on the fence. Um, I'll post something in there. Um, I will post something on my personal status. I actually, my, uh, my latest director, actually, she was a fast track director. She, she joined because I had put something on my status and she said, oh, I want an invitation. And so she, she got an, in, you know, invited and uh, ended up signing up and promoting to director. So um, yeah, I definitely put something on my, on my personal status. I'll put stuff, I, I don't know, I kind of put it everywhere. I'll, I'll send out a, you know, a, a consultant connection email to my whole list and include the Facebook link. Um, I kind of, I kind of put it everywhere. I'll go back into my, uh, private, you know, my past parties and post something there. Um, I don't know. Am I forgetting anything, Pam? You covered it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how we invite. You're muted, Robin. Michelle McLean has a question. Michelle, if you would like to ask Gretchen your question, go ahead. Okay, I have two questions. If you're um, putting a customer connection email uh, and you have the Facebook link in it, how do you set up the event? Is the event like a public event then? So um, we have, in the past, we had always made them private events. Um, 
the last couple we actually did as public events. Okay. So, you know, it's, you kind of have to figure out what's, what's good for you. Um, what we liked about the public events is that, yeah, I mean, you're kind of going, oh my gosh, all my friends can see all this, but then you kind of go, well, so what, like, what are they seeing? You know? So they're seeing, you know, my paychecks and some of my other friends paychecks, or they're seeing something about, you know, the trips that you can earn as a consultant, you know, who cares? Um, yeah, Pam actually had somebody join. Didn't you, do you have somebody join from that last year? Kim Mitchell. Oh. who's now a director. Yeah. Huh? She never would have invited her, never would have reached out to her, nope. but because she had something on her personal <laughs> status, Tim was like, Oh yeah, sign me up. Cool. So, um, I don't always do it that way. The last one that I did, I think was private. Um, but you know, you kind of, I, I think, you know, and you guys all know this cause you're all, you're all here, but you know, when you get to the point where you're like, I really don't care who knows, um, you know, how great this business is. I'm pretty much going to like shout it from the rooftops. Um, that's when you'll, you'll really, you know, start to recruit and, you know, people will be attracted to you. So. Thank you. My other question is the thinkers group. So, um, how often do you post in there? What kinds of things are you posting? I'm not posting enough. Um, I can tell you that right now. I, you know, I think Kim Hogan was the one who, at least that I heard about it from. Um, I'm trying to get my team to post in there more often. Um, not particularly successfully, but what I do, I do post at least once a week in there. And of course, at the beginning of the month, it's, oh my gosh, here's the new special, you know. And then um, every time we have a look and learn um, opportunity event or whatever, I'm posting that in there. Um, I post on payday. Usually I'll post something like, hey, it's Pam for Jeff payday. You know, if you were a consultant, you'd be getting, you know, an extra $400 in your account or whatever. Um, I have requested some of my team members to go live and just do a quick, you know, three minute what I love about Pam for Jeff. It's really just anything and everything. Um, I just kind of throw it in there and then I'm a, I'm, I'm a, an observer on Pam's group too. And in Jen. So if they post something, then I steal it and post it in mine. <laughs> you know, you gotta have buddies, you guys. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I think, um, I think you touched on something too. There's, there's so much information out there that can be borrowed and customized and, mm -hmm. You know, you just have to watch using the same picture in too many places that you don't land yourself in Facebook jail. So I think it's important to um, <coughs> to just go out there and look. I know Chanda talked a lot about the thinkers group. And I actually had this conversation with another director earlier today. And, you know, the nice thing about doing it in a group is that it stays live and you can go in and post all the time. And... Mm -hmm you can go back and celebrate the ones that take the leap and sign their contract, you know, and let everybody else congratulate them. And then they might be thinking, Oh, you know what? Maybe I should do this too, because she's decided to do it. So it must be a good idea. But I, I think, I think there's some real value in that thinkers group. Yeah. Um, Holly, I think, I think what Holly was asking there is absolutely you could do it organization wide, Holly, you know, have your whole team, whole, your whole team put their people in there. And that helps you as the leader, see who's got potential recruits and help get them signed. And again, you're creating that recruiting culture by, you know, offering that up. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mine is for my whole, team and I encourage them to put them, but I do, I, I will say this. And one thing I forgot to mention, um, we tell them only to put them in that group after the recruit lead has told them, no, I'm not ready now. Because, um, if you just start putting people in that group right away, you might have people who decide to hold off when they're actually ready. So instead of throwing them in that group right away, 
Um, I tell my team, um, open up a three-way conversation with me, a three-way chat on Facebook. Pam made this one up too. She says she creates nothing, but she did. She made that up. Um, uh, open up a three-way chat with you know me and your recruit lead and I'll answer her questions. And yeah, we had a ton of people join because of that. Um, and I just tell you know my, my team, open up a three-way chat, just say, hey, this is my friend Gretchen. She helped me get started. Um, you know, she can answer your questions. And then not only am I able to answer the recruit leads questions, but I'm training my consultant at the same time about how to, you know, I had a new consultant, a newer consultant do this last week and she opened this three-way chat and what, and, and I, I didn't give a good explanation of how to do it. So the, um, the new consultant's first thing that she messaged to this person was like this long and it was like all the benefits of being a consultant. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this poor person, she's never going to read all that. So I just responded and I said, hey, you know, I've been a consultant for 12 years. Um, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. And uh, what interests you about Pamper Chef? You know, so starting out with those questions to her as far as like, you know, why do you want to do this? Um, you know, it, that was a training opportunity for her. So... Awesome. Um, anybody else have a question for Gretchen? You have to unmute yourself. Ms. Holly, there she is. Do you think that the reason why you had more virtual um, qualifications is because you were more involved in what they were doing, like you could see the, sh the posts they were doing on their shows and possibly okay. even doing some um, posts for them? All right, so this is another thing that, uh, that Pam, I, I think you came up with this one too, Pam, running their first virtual, I don't know if you did or if you, okay. Um, yeah, she doesn't give herself enough credit for creating stuff, but basically, you know, I have the whole outline for my virtual parties already. I have it in CentShare. I know how to use CentShare. When I've got a virtual consultant, I tell them, you know, either before they sign up or right after, I say, now you need to go get three or four virtual party hosts who will host for you five, yeah, next week. Um, and we're gonna, you know, set up and I'm gonna run your parties for them. So yeah, that's, that's what that's what I have done. Yeah, and I don't do it every time. I mean, it depends on the consultant. Some consultants sign up and they're like, they got it. You know, they're, they, they're just naturals. Um, and so they do it um, on their own. But, and then other consultants need so much more help than that. Um, but for the most part, you know, I'll at least run two or three, you know, virtual parties for them. So that's why. I think with the cooking show consultants, when they sign up at a cooking show, they're considering themselves to be a cooking show consultant. So they're thinking, I got to go book a cooking show. And that is just a much lengthier process, you know, whether you like it or not. I know when we signed up, they're like, oh, go book six shows and there's no reason you can't book next week. Well, to a brand new consultant to tell them they got to go do a cooking show next week, that is completely intimidating. Yeah. And, um, you know, so that's why I think the virtual, now my goal is to get with those cooking show consult or recruits to say, we're going to set up some virtual parties for you. I need you to go find these virtual parties. And, and some of them will do that, but others are like, some of them aren't even on Facebook. So I can't right. even do that. But yeah, that's, you know, setting up those virtual parties for the new consultant. That's been huge. Yeah. I, I figured it was because it was an, an, easier uh training helping than going to you know grand openings and all that kind of stuff so right right so yep. great answer great question thanks anybody else have a question you said you do about 21 posts in your look and learns Besides the kit and paychecks and trip pictures. Well, those are all, those are all one of the, 
Oh, you're asking what else? Like is there? what? Yeah, I mean, is it, do you do products or do you do? So our, no, our look and learns are really designed to be interactive. I took a an outline that I had gotten, I believe, from uh, like Jennifer Courtney, and uh, and I mean, there's look and learn out outlines all over the place out there, but um, I took one and I really edited it, edited it, it to be very interactive. So every single post asks a question of yeah. the you know the people who are attending so for instance one of them talks about you know how to get bookings and you know it kind of goes into the idea of you know bookings are everywhere blah 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 and then at the end of that post it asks the question who would be your first hosts so every post somebody and then you know the kit which kit would you choose um what kind of a consultant can you be? You know, the, the one that's like, which apron would you wear? Mm -hmm. um, that post is out there. But then at the end of that post, it says, you know, what do you see yourself doing? You know, do you see yourself being a virtual consultant, a cooking show consultant, whatever? Um, so yeah, every, uh, what are your special talents? Um, you know, what are you good at? Because, and I've, I put that one in there, or I don't know if I did or not, or if I changed it around, but um, so often, you know, people come into this business and they'll tell, the first thing they'll tell me is all their shortcomings, all their weaknesses. And well, I'm not good at technical stuff. Well, I'm not good at Facebook or I'm not, I'm not good. I'm not good at cooking, you know, <laughs> so right. I want them to focus on their strengths. And so, and again, you know, every post is designed to get a response out of them. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a great. really good plan. That's a great way to be interactive. The people that I've um, hosted virtual opportunities event events with, the, pe the people that were attending felt like it was too much information all at once. And they're trying to read one post and then they're trying to go back and catch another one. So I think the being interactive is really, really helpful. Yeah. Um, and I think that going live is really helpful too, because it really makes you just, uh, you know, a real person. I mean, you know, Jen gets on there sometimes and her kids are running around and her dog's barking and, you know, um, Pam or I get on and we're like in our pajamas, you know, whatever. It's like, uh, I'm just your girlfriend, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah and some of the other events that i did it was just craziness like there were just too many consultants in there and consultants were posting on every single post you couldn't tell who was a consultant and who wasn't a consultant there was just like way too much information and way too much like i felt like i was at a pep rally i'm like <laughs> everyone was like and you can do this and blah, blah 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 i'm like okay these are real people they want a real answer you know and, and not that they weren't being truthful, but, um, you know, I think you do have to be careful with how many people you're including um, because it can get overwhelming to those prospective consultants as far as, you know, if there's too many consultants on there and they're all chiming in, um, they can feel like they're being ganged up on. <laughs> hey, Gretchen. So. Gretchen, I've got a question for you. Um, are you willing to share your sent share outline just so we can get an overview of how we you have, do it? Yeah, we have, we, we don't, we're not going to share like our most recent one because we want to avoid, you know, Facebook jail, obviously. Um, but we do have like some past, you know, some recent past ones that we can share. Yeah. That would be great. Um, Thank you. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, And again, I, I think, you know, the biggest benefit of that is to ourselves because it really, you know, puts us in the mindset of I'm recruiting, you know, and it gives our team something to say, hey, we're having this event next Tuesday. I'd love for you to come. It gives us a reason to reach out to those recruit leads again and check with them. And, um, and you guys, you probably all know the t statistics of like, um, what is it? 80% of people join after having been asked at least five times, but only like 12% of people ask more than once, you know, 12% of salespeople ask more than once. 
you know, so you got to keep asking. You have to find a way to do it where it doesn't feel pushy to you. And the way to do that is to make it all about them. Um, I mean, I, you know, I talked about my goals and my why, and that it starts out being all about you, but the part that's all about you is only to get you to focus on seeing the recruit leads that are out there already. Once you're in a conversation with a recruit lead, flip it so that it's all about them. And you have to find out what it is that um, would benefit them from, you know, being in this business. Um, and they really are everywhere. I mean, Bonnie, I met Bonnie on a, um, a free cycle group. It was like a, you know what I mean? Like one of those yard sale, Facebook yard sale back, you know, she's like five years in, in the business, but, and that was before the yard sale groups on Facebook, but there was a free cycle and I was getting rid of something and she responded to it. And, uh, you know, I don't know, just got into a conversation with her. Um, and again, that's a great place to find recruit leads places like that, because, you know, these are people who are on these groups because they like to save money, you know, so recruit them. <laughs> hey, Gretchen, um, when you're doing your um, look and learn and you've got um, recruits of uh, potential recruits of your team, how do you contain your team? Do you tell them ahead of time? Um, kind of let me run this. Don't jump in there all the time or because you know you got it. <laughs> The people who kind of jump in and, um, you know, sometimes we'll have some new consultants um, who, you know, are like answering the questions and don't understand what the purpose of the event is really. So I'll just private message them usually. If it's during the event, sometimes I'll message them and just say, hey, can you do me a favor and just, um, you know, send me your, your questions. Wait a minute, I want to interrupt you. Robin, this is my baby girl, Kendall. Hi. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll just private message them and, you know, and they don't know they're, they're not trying to be, you know, a problem or anything, but I'll just message them and say, Hey, you know, um, can you do me a favor and just shoot your questions to me instead of commenting on them? But uh, sometimes I like to have a lot of consultants, um, at least, you know, saying something because sometimes those events are so dead. I'm like, we got to get something going on out there. Yeah. So But, All right. Anybody else have a question for Gretchen? I just want to say it's really nice meeting you guys. I have to run because I have to go feed my mother-in-law and then do kid therapy. So have a wonderful day. You too, Thanks, Bonnie. you too. Thanks for joining us, Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie. <laughs> yeah, and thank you guys all. for, And thank you, Robin, for doing this. I, like I said, I had a couple of people who were saying they wanted to, um, you know, pick my brain and I've been, you know, I've picked other people's brains. I remember the first year that I wanted, I decided I wanted to go for um, excellence in recruiting and which was, it just seemed absolutely impossible um, to me. So I put something out there on like, um, I don't know, one of those director pages and I just said, hey, is there anybody who has earned excellence in recruiting that would let me, you know, call them up on the phone? And there was one girl, her name was Johnny. I don't even remember. I don't even know if she's still um, in the business or not. But anyway, she said, yeah, <coughs> I spent a good, you know, hour, hour and a half on the phone with her, just picking her brain. And, um, you know, I, I love that about our company, that everybody is so willing to share, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and learning from my new consultants, too. I mean, my gosh, they've, treat, they've taught me so much, so... <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we really thank you, Gretchen, for your time today. Um, I hope everybody picked up a couple of tips. I know even I, I, I learn something every time I listen to somebody else, especially somebody like Gretchen, who's really been in the trenches, made the decision to grow her business and has done fabulous things. So thank you so much. I will finish the recording and I will get it posted. I'm going to post it. Um, on our purple pride page, but I'm going to wait and put it up as a YouTube link so that if you want to share it with your teams, you can, and that takes a little while to make that happen. So if you don't see it right away, that's why. Thanks so much, everyone.
Thank you.